Hey guys, and welcome to a new Maya video. We're going to be working in Maya 2018, and today I'm going to tell you guys how you can create very cool light effects in your scene that can be applied in, let's say, a kitchen, but also maybe a car, a sci-fi, a laser pack, uh, all that kind of cool stuff, right? Let's uh, jump in and check it out. Here we go. Hey everybody and welcome to a new video. Okay, well, I uh, pulled up a couple of reference images in uh, Google to give you guys an idea what we're going to be talking about today. And basically what we're going to be doing is light. And we're going to try to simulate some uh, light or LED light. Uh, both is possible. Uh, but what I want to show you guys is that there are a lot of applications to do this. So, for example, here you see ceiling light, you see floor lighting, you got light under cupboards whatnot. But also keep in mind light, for example, let's say on sci-fi armor, on um, uh, automotive models like cars or whatnot, um, maybe a sci-fi panel, that kind of stuff, okay? So um, the thing with this video is uh, I will show you guys to create a light source from any shape you want, okay? Well, let's jump into Maya and check it out. All right, so this is the scene that we're going to use today. It's a kitchen I did a while back and nothing fancy. It's just a simple uh, kitchen with a spotlight on it and I have a dome light. So if I open up my attribute editor, I got a couple of things going on. I have a group for my mesh lights. And of course, I'm going to show you guys how to do that, how to set it up and whatnot. I have my actual kitchen and then I got some lighting and that's all set up in my kitchen group. Okay, but don't worry about that. Okay, so the mesh lights. Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to my bookmark. So I'm going to go to View, Bookmark, and New. I'll just minimize this, and we'll do a quick IPR render. Now, my settings are quite uh, low, so it's quite rough, uh, just to save some time here. But you can see that under the, uh, the cupboards, there is a white light going on, okay? Now, that's one example of what you can do with this. And uh, like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to set it up, but also how to manipulate it, how to change the color, intensity, and so forth, okay? So let's just uh, close this guy down. And I guess the best way to explain to you guys how to do this is just by doing it, all right? So what we'll do is we'll take a, a random object here. Let's do maybe, uh, I don't know, let's do a sphere. So we're going to take this sphere, I mean W, and I'm going to move that up. And let's move it into our scene somewhere where we have some sort of backdrop, just so we can see the effect of the light on our model. Just bring it in here. Now, it wouldn't really make sense to have a sphere like this here, but you get the idea, okay? Alrighty, so we've got this sphere going on in our kitchen. Now, let's turn this into a mesh light. So I'm going to close this down. I got my uh, sphere selected, and I'm going to go up to uh, Arnold. I'm in my modeling menu. Go to Arnold, go to Lights, and we're going to select Mesh Light. Now, when we do that, you see that the object changes somewhat, and it also pulls up the attribute editor. And within the attribute editor, you have the uh, Light uh, Polysphere 1 Shape tab, and under that, you have the Light Attributes. That's kind of cool, right? Okay, so Light set up. So now, if we IPR render, we should see it, right? Well, let's see. I'm just going to click on that. And as it starts to render out, you see there's some kind of darkish blob going on in the kitchen there, but it doesn't resemble a light at all, right? Let's uh, shut this down, get a bit closer here, and let's do that again, and I'll show you. So as you can see, it didn't quite work out just yet, okay? So what else do we need to do? Well, if we look at this tab right here, what we see is that we need to make the light visible. So if we go in and we check this little box right here, there we go, and give that a sec. Now suddenly the sphere is visible, but where's my light at, right? Because that's kind of the whole point. So looking at the light, there are a couple of things we need to play with. We have an intensity slider and we have an exposure slider. Now the intensity helps to a degree and the exposure, you could almost say that's kind of the multiplier of the intensity. It's not exactly, but it's an easy way to explain it. Okay, so let's see what happens when we set the intensity to, let's say, 10. And because we've got a real-time render going on, we can see immediately what will happen, right? So let's set that to 10. 
As soon as we do that, you see that we now have a nice glowing uh, white ball that is uh, emitting some light uh, on the floor and wall, as you can see. But it's not uh, enough. It's not what I'm looking for. I want it to be a bit more intense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Exposure tab, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this Exposure level to 2, and hit Enter. And there you have it. It's uh, suddenly a very, very bright light. Okay, cool. That's exactly what we're going for. Now, now that we have that, let's see what else we can do here. Um, of course, you can play with the quality. So you can uh, increase the number of samples. It will increase your render time, but you will get a better quality. Okay, you can change the uh, the shadow color. You got the volume samples you can play with, and of course you got the shadow density that you can play with, right? But what if we want to change the color of this guy? Let's say we want to change the color from white to, for example, blue, right? Let's go in here and let's, oh, well, let's do red. We'll click on red, and immediately we have a red light source. Very, very easy, okay? Now, of course, you can play with the intensity of that. You can mix colors. You can do all that kind of cool stuff. But let's say you are working on a car and the car has LED lights and the LED light has an indicator where it has a Kelvin number on it. So Kelvin, uh, a Kelvin number typically used in photography but also in lighting is kind of an indicator of what the color of the light might be based on temperature, right? So let's say we want to do that. And we want to mimic maybe a late afternoon-ish glow, okay? Now, what we need to do for that is we need to go into use color temperature instead of this color tab up here. So when we select that, it overrules that red, right? And we now have to go in here and punch in a Kelvin number. So I'm going to go in here and let's set this to about 3000 degrees Kelvin, which should produce something looking a bit orange, okay? So I'm going to go in and type in 3000, hit enter, and it should change immediately, and it does. Kind of cool, right? So what if we go in and do, for example, 8000 Kelvin? Should be much cooler. And that's kind of important if you want to be really exact about it, okay? So now that we have this all set up here, let's uh, get rid of this guy and apply it to our actual lights in our kitchen and see how that pans out, okay? So we're gonna close down our IPR here, and I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna select this guy and hit delete. And what's kind of funny is when you hit delete here, it will first delete your light, and then you go in and you delete your actual sphere, okay? So we got our lights set up here, and uh, here we are in our uh, outliner. I'm gonna go back in. We're gonna go to the light on the left, and uh, let's see here. I don't have any color temperature set up yet, but I do have an intensity of 20 and an exposure of three. So let's go in and use that color temperature, and let's set that to maybe 3500. All right, kind of orange-ish, okay? We're gonna go into the second one. We're gonna use that color temperature again, 3500, and then we're gonna go into the third one, use color temperature, and 3500, and hit enter. We're gonna minimize this. We're gonna go back to our bookmark. Let's get a bookmark and new, and then we're gonna IPR render, and let's see what we got. And as you can see, it worked like a charm. Now, I cannot emphasize enough to you guys how important it is to understand the application of this, right? You can use this for so, so many different things. So, um, yeah, that's basically it for this uh, video. Before you guys sign off uh, and before I sign off, I want to uh, update you guys on something which is new. Um, I did kind of a poll with you guys, and you mentioned that you don't really uh, like the time-lapse videos, so I came up with something else, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, review work. I'm going to do uh, one video a week if I get enough entries where people can send in their work, their portfolio, their animation, their still render or whatnot. And what I will do is online in a video, I will pick it apart and I will mention the strong points, the weak points, 
what needs uh, to be improved and so forth. And then you have the option to uh, be named by name or stay anonymous based on what you like, okay? So I'll put the details below. I'll put an email address below where you can send that in. And if you're into that kind of thing, let's do that, all right? Well, thank you guys for watching as always and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.